Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Today's devotional on SCNN in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we cannot thank you enough for all the mighty things you have been doing for us. Even when we are not qualified, your grace and mercy has qualified us, and we do not take it for granted. This morning, even as we embark on this day, we depend on you, Holy Spirit divine, that we will take the lead as we follow, that as we shall return, we are returning with our testimony. Do for us what only you can do via this meditation, that at the end, your name be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Once again, beloved, you are welcome to the Daily Fountain Devotional. Today being Monday, the 28th of June, 2021, we are considering the topic, Share Your Personal Testimony. And the text is taken from John chapter 4, from verse 34 to 45. John chapter 4, from verse 34 to 45. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that bought he that soweth, and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And hearing is that saying true, one sow it, and another reap it. I sent you to reap, that whereon ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him out ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own country. Then, when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. The Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Beloved in Christ, this morning God is bringing our way his word again. As we prepare to embark on this day to begin a new week, believing and trusting that God himself will perfect that which concerns us. And the topic before us, like I said, is share your personal testimony. 
Now, from the text where we read, you will discover if you have been following the devotion in the course of the weekend, you will discover that Jesus has been conversing with the Samaritan woman. But at this particular point in time, it was no longer only the woman and the disciples. More people were involved, which I believe that as a result of her work of evangelism, sharing her own experience and personal encounter with Jesus brought about the multitude that this time around we are present to listen to Jesus talking. And we saw from where we read, even when he was still talking to the disciples, I believe from the time they wanted him to eat to the time he talked to this woman and to the time that this crowd gathered, you can imagine the kind of strength that have gone out of him. In the first verse, in verse 34 where we read, he said, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So he was not just doing it for a moment. He was not just doing it when it is convenient. He was not just doing it when it is palatable. He was willing and ready to do it to the fullest. He was willing and ready to do it to the very end. He was not doing a haphazard work. He was not doing a half-baked Christianity work, as the case it is in our generation. But we saw Jesus was willing to do it to the very end. He was willing to finish it. And to the glory of God, from Scripture you will agree with me that Jesus did his work to the very end. He did his work to the fullest. And as such, he could confidently let know to the disciples his own purpose of existence. And when you continue reading, you will discover that this woman brought about the crowd. How? By simply sharing her personal testimony. Before now, this woman never told anybody her lifestyle. Before this very moment, she never tell anybody the kind of life she's living. I want to believe, if not for the encounter, she would have been ashamed to even let anybody know that this thing has happened or somebody have known her secret life. But glory be to God, who gave her the opportunity to have this glorious encounter. And as such, she was not ashamed. She was not in any way embarrassed, nor feel troubled, nor intimidated by her past. She was so happy. She was so proud. She felt comfortable sharing her testimony. Why? Because there was an encounter. There was a supernatural experience with divinity. She was not the normal prostitute. He was not the normal woman that jumped from one man to another. Why? Because she met with the Lord. And as such, that marked a moment of a turnaround in her life. And she could confidently run into the city to tell the people, come and see the man who tell me things about me, which I thought nobody knew about. And when the people came, at first, they were coming because of her testimony. Hallelujah. And good a thing, when they came, the testimony dragged them to Jesus. But believe me you, Jesus was still willing and available to continue with the work he began. To him, he has done, but he has not done his best. He did what he has done in letting this woman know who she is. But that was not the end of the road. So when this crowd gathered, they will not continue to hear a story from the mouth of this woman. If they come and she keep on telling the story, what next do you think will happen? They will end up celebrating the woman. 
They will only end up telling the story of the woman. They will only end up reciting what this woman is saying over and over. And as such, Jesus took hold of the privilege. And the platform this woman testimony brought about. The Bible says he continued to talk. He continued to teach. He continued to preach. And these same people that came on account of this woman testimony could not continue to hold on to the woman's testimony. The Bible says, they said to this woman, we have had this man by ourselves, by the reason of being here. We are seated before him. Haven't heard what you told us this time around. We are hearing him face to face. We are not believing on him because of what you just told us, but because we ourselves, we have heard him. You see the story or the discussion have to change face. They have to grow in their faith. Their understanding grew. Their knowledge and understanding about Christ changed because before now, the woman was the one telling them that the Christ is here. And what was her evidence is because he had told her issues in her life that she thought nobody knew. But when Jesus began to talk to them, they also have an encounter. They had an experience. And there and then, they could not hold it. They go ahead to share their own testimony. Yes, we come here because you told us your story. But at this particular point in time, we cannot but believe him for what we have heard ourselves. Now, people of God, it will interest you to know that somebody will drag you to church. But it is not enough for you to remain in church because of that person. It could be your pastor. It could be your parents. It could be your friend. As a case may be. But believe me you, until you get to that point of your personal encounter, testimony cannot be shared. It is at that particular moment that you have registered a genuine encounter with Christ. Then you become restless until you meet with someone you share your testimony with. And so anyone that finds it difficult to share his or her testimony, check it, that encounter is not yet complete. And I dare to say, it is unchristian for you to keep your testimonies to yourself. Who knows? That testimony is a turning point of someone just beside you. In your office, in your place of business, in your family, and the place you find yourself. The person's life is at stake, just waiting for you to open up your mouth and share that testimony. Before you know it, there is a turnaround. And this morning, God is challenging you and I to open up, to get to work, sharing our testimony, because it is a great tool and a weapon that brings more souls to the kingdom. And above all, even to you as a person, your ability to share your testimony guarantees your victory over the devil. Just as we see in Revelation chapter 12, verses 11, Bible made it very clear for us that they overcame through the blood and the word of their testimony. So, your ability to share your testimony is a guarantee of victory over Satan and his works. And why do I say so? The more you share your testimony, the more you talk about God. The more you intimidate the devil. The more you let the devil know that he's losing. The more you let the devil know that Jesus is in charge. That Jesus has won the battle for you. But once you are afraid to share your testimony, you are ashamed. You are thinking of what people will say. You are thinking of how people will begin to look at you. You are thinking of how people will begin to treat you. You are careful not to share your testimony. Listen to me, God's people. No matter how ugly 
your past is, no matter how bad it is, once there is a genuine encounter, you can never be ashamed. This woman, permit me to say, was a prostitute. But by the reason of this encounter, she was not ashamed to make it publicly known. I believe it is not just because Jesus exposed her, because there was nobody there for her to feel ashamed or embarrassed. It was just her and Jesus. But the encounter with the Messiah, which even in her sinful life, she was also waiting for the Messiah. She was waiting for the Christ. But it has never dawned on her that the life she was living was wrong. For somebody to live with one, two, three, up to fifth husband, and still continue with life normal, Beloved, that is what we see in our generation. And if you think you have an ugly past, you will not do others good if you do not open up to share with them. For some, we just feel we are so superhuman. We are sinless just because of grace. And you look at any other person around you living in sin as useless people and people who are doomed and condemned to hell. But if only you open up and share your own testimony, how God has saved you, how Jesus has snatched you out of darkness into his marvelous light, as it were with this woman of Samaritan. Believe me, you, someone somewhere will be saved. Someone somewhere will be delivered. That you are a fornicator. You used to be an adulterer. You used to be a drunkard. Now you are saved. And you feel you cannot tell others because they will look down on you. You are not doing yourself good. You are not doing others good. Because there are people who are wallowing in sin. They are struggling with such issues. But they have not had anybody who come out of it. Some are feeling, is it possible for them to be saved? Can God save a sinner like me? And I tell you, your testimony will assure them that it is possible. And I pray this morning that God will release grace upon you to share your own personal testimony, your personal experience and encounter with Christ so as others will be saved in the name of Jesus. And so it is important for us to know that our ability to share our testimony of faith guarantees as well confirm our victory over issues of life. That exactly was the testimony of this woman. And that was her victory. When she said it, I believe she never go back to that lifestyle again. She never go back because the people have already had it. She confirmed it. And Jesus was there to confirm it. So there was no room for her to go back. Living that sinful life again. And so it is to you. Once you make an open show of the devil by publicly disgracing him. By telling others about your encounter with Jesus. Believe me, you, you have conquered that habit. You have conquered that sin. You have conquered those issues that are holding you bound. And I pray God will give you grace in the name of Jesus. Paraventure, you are listening to me this morning. You are going through issues that are hidden. There are things that you are doing in your closet. Nobody knows. Nobody sees. Your boss in the office does not know. Your superiors in the ministry do not know. Your parents do not know. People around you, those friends, those customers do not know. And you know that you are struggling to survive. This is an opportunity for you. You are a Christian, yes. No doubt. But you are still keeping it. That is why whenever you are about to turn, the devil will start pinching you. Will start reminding you. And before you know, you have to draw back. If only you open up, you will be free. And others will be encouraged. And so, beloved, I want you to believe that the Samaritan woman never go back to her own life. Why? Because she share her personal testimony about Jesus Christ. And so, you will need to do the same. So as you will be victorious over issues of life, and you enable others also to come out of addictions, to come out of issues that are holding them bound. So, you will need not to be ashamed of your past. You will need not to be ashamed 
of your testimony. Remember Jesus said in the gospel, Whosoever is ashamed of me before men, I will also be ashamed of him before my father. You don't need to wait until you appear before the judgment seat for Jesus to deny you, to be ashamed of you. You will need to open up. I'm saying this because this is an issue, especially for us as Anglicans. We don't know how to testify. We don't know how to give testimonies. But this morning, God is challenging us. God is encouraging us on the need to share our personal testimony. Stop telling other people's story. Stop sharing other people's testimony. What about you? If you have an encounter with him, it is also good to be told. It is also good to be shared. There are people around you. There are people out there that will need to hear your testimony so that they also will have a turn around. And I pray grace will come upon you this morning to go about sharing your personal testimony in order to populate the kingdom of heaven and the populate hell in the name of Jesus. And what you have not this morning, beloved, there is no substitute to your personal testimony. Take this to heart. There are many people that just know the God of their geo. They only know the God of their father. They only know the God of their prophet, but they don't know their own God. They don't have their own God. They cannot tell people about their own God. They only live in the past and in all that their pastor said, in all that their prophet says. But what God told them, what God is saying to them, they cannot hear, they cannot understand, and they cannot tell others. But I pray for you this morning. You will not be a such Christian in the name of Jesus. God will grant you grace to share your own experience of whom Christ is, of whom God is, and on account of your own sharing, on account of you telling people of whom this God is and what he has done to you, they will come to also want to experience him in the name of Jesus. So do not substitute your own personal testimony, your experience and encounter with Christ, with that of your geo or your pastor, your friends, your parents or people around you. You will need to share your own story. You will need to tell your own story. It is very, very important and needful, especially in the times we are in. And as I conclude, I would like to leave you with this question. Do you have a personal encounter with Christ? I repeat, do you have a personal encounter with Christ? If you don't, you still have an opportunity. Just open up to Christ this morning. Invite him into your life to be your personal Lord and Savior. Let him address issues in your life. Those addiction, it could be lies, it could be drunkenness, it could be idolatry, it could be masturbation, it could be fornication, and all of that. If only you open up to him, he will come in, he will save you, he will turn your life around, and then you will be able to tell others who are trading in those path, never to continue. And I pray that God will reach out to somebody who is ready to accept him and to open up to him, to dwell in him. And that will be your own testimony for life in the name of Jesus. And if you have, then go ahead and share with others because the salvation of people around you may lie in the hands of your testimony. Receive grace to share your personal testimonies with others. In Jesus' name, amen. The prayer on our devotion, you are going to say after me, Lord, thank you for my faith. Give me the courage to share my testimony to all those around me. Amen. May the Lord bless his word in our heart and give us the grace to be people 
that we share our testimonies with others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.